one. Hey everybody, we're here today with theater student Alexis Hall and we're going to be talking to you about the new acting class that we have this semester and both of us are in it so we're going to tell you a little bit about it today. So, But first I want to start off Alexis by asking you about what got you interested in wanting to take an acting class? Well, in high school, I did do acting as soon as we were allowed, so it starts right around ninth grade and up, so I did the plays in my high school. And then when I got here, I wasn't really even aware they had particularly acting classes. And so for the first year, I didn't do it here, and then finally, when I was signing up for classes this past semester, I happened to look into the acting classes and they were free spaces. And I also knew it would transfer to my university, and so I decided to go ahead and take it because I have always had a passion for acting and theater. And so I just figured what harm could it be, and so I took it, and I am severely happy that I did. Yeah, it's a really fun class, and that this, the reason that I'm taking it is because I needed another elective, and I was like, well... If I have to take an elective, I might as well do one that I'm really going to enjoy and have fun and with. And plus, I um, talked you into yes. it. I kind of <laughs> did pressure you to go into it with me because I didn't want to be the only one in there. And I'm glad you did because it has been really fun and it's mm -hmm. been really rewarding so far. And um, we have a production coming up, but we can't we give too many details about that. So... Yep. We've had a lot of fun with it, and... It's definitely a confidence builder. Yeah. Like, our director, Mr. Uh, Rains Carr, he is very big into getting you confident in yourself and what you're doing in your public speaking, whether you're working with someone or performing by yourself. His confidence-building boosters are amazing. They really make you feel good about yourself. And he has all of these um, team-building techniques or ensemble techniques right, is what he yeah. does. So you really get close with your fellow actors and your people in your class, and everyone's super nice. And it's not, you know, you are free to be yourself in there, really. Right, and it's not clicky. Yeah, and it really helps you get into that mindset of being in character, because it, the room we practice in is, it's just box theater, so it's a big old room with four black walls. And so there is no stage, technically, so you just have to get in there and do it. All that you're doing is... Your character speech, your monologues, your acting, improv, you're not really talking a whole lot. That's just pure body movement. And so it really does get you into the character, I've got to tell you. And it builds your confidence completely because there's nowhere else to go. Right, and you're projecting yourself, your character, in all four mm -hmm. dimensions because you're not facing an audience. Mm -hmm. The audience is all around you. But, yeah, I was going to talk about some of the team building exercises that we do. Mm -hmm. I really have enjoyed those. Yes. And it, it doesn't even seem like we're doing work but no, we are just games yeah but we are and it's already helped tremendously with a lot of the students acting mm -hmm. already and um it's been really good it's been a really good bonding experience and you have to have that bonding to build trust to be able to act and be in character yes. with all these different people that's very true yeah i also agree because he said something the first day of class about how you'll have to pull back your embarrassment and your shame and your own look out on how you should act around others. And so you'd have to pull that back to really embrace your actor side to take on another character. And I really think we've been working very hard at that. And it's very nerve wracking <laughs> to be in that kind of situation, but it is a, a very calm and safe environment to do that in where you're not being judged horrendously by everyone. So it is a very good space. and. For him being as experienced he is, you can definitely tell. Because we've done uh, one monologue giving, and just from us giving it to how we see it, to his opinion on what we should do, the people's acting has gone from like maybe a level 3 to a level 10 in maybe like 10 minutes of workshop with that. So it's yeah. very, it's very um, obvious, his expertise in the field and him helping us, because I think we're really going to do some really fun stuff this semester and next once we are able to start doing our in-person productions again. Right, I think so too. And also, he talks to us about amateurism, which a lot of people don't really realize what that is, but most people think that when you go into acting that you're either a very naturally gifted actor or you just aren't and there's no techniques that you can use to build on that. But there are very few people who can just go into acting with no, with out any type of technique building and I didn't realize I just always assumed that you just had this 
stage mm -hmm. magic, as he called yeah. it, that gets you into character, and that's always what I used, but he kind of explained to us how to make it easier to get into character by breaking down the different lines and studying them and studying the text and being like, okay, what type of emotion goes here and what type of um, mannerisms do I need to use here? And mm -hmm. it kind of adds flavor to it. It makes it more believable. It gives a more yeah. believable performance. There's some hardcore studying you have to do. Yeah. Like legit, I one thing I was shocked about is the amount of, I don't want to say book work, but the amount of work you have to put into it, because I was under the impression of the stage magic as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you go in, you're good, or you're not. What do you do <laughs> after that? Well, apparently, there's a lot of um, technique. It's pen to paper mm -hmm. technique. You write out your lines, you put an action to it. You really have to break it you know, down line by line, word by word, action by action, and how you get into character. And that's, it's a hardcore technique. There's a, we have a book this big that we are studying right now trying to get into a mindset of building a skill. Because just like anything else, like singing, anybody can sing, you just have to work at it. You right. have to learn how to do it, and I guess acting's the same way. Right, and a lot of it takes, you can sit there and learn it, but a lot of it takes confidence, and that's the biggest part of the class, mm -hmm. is it's such a confidence builder. And it's the same in singing yes. and playing an instrument, it's all about the confidence. Like you can have, what makes you a good, sharpened performer is instead of relying on that one moment of stage magic that just that just boosts you and you're like oh I was so confident right now mm -hmm. but maybe the next performance isn't as confident yeah. and it's really messed up um, that's what the technique building stuff is for because it helps you to keep that confidence and you can have that confidence better when you're not going into it with a vague mindset of okay so I just need to kind of do this like if you know exactly what you need to do and mm -hmm. you practice it it definitely gives you a lot more confidence to to give a good performance but I wanted to talk to you about um, what you plan on doing with acting if because I know that that's not your yeah. major but do you think that you might carry that into well honestly okay so I am a communications major and along with that comes a lot of public speaking right. and so one perk of doing this acting and getting into the mindset of being able to present something to someone, because that's pretty much all acting is, presenting right. a story to someone. So when public speaking, you know, that's pretty much what you're doing. And so I would think, I'm still kind of curious about if I will double major in acting and communications or not yet, I'm still making up my mind. But even if I don't and just stick with communications, I think the confidence building in myself and what I'm saying and how to get a message across will definitely be you know, integrated into the communications, along with being able to kind of break down something like that. Like, how do I need to portray what I'm saying? Like, do, am I saying a sad message? Am I saying kind of an upbeat message? How do we continuously bring the energy the whole time? Because sometimes, if you notice, even when just regular public speaking, people will get real excited at certain parts and then lose your attention to other places. Right. And so I really think for my particular focus in communications, I'm going to have to kind of mingle the two together to bring the energy, bring the, I don't know, pizzazz to it, what you're trying to say to keep yeah. people interested and aware of the message you're saying and how to convey it correctly. Right. So I really think it's, you know, a pretty good mix of skills we're doing. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, I'm a business major, mm -hmm. so I... I'm looking, I'm leaning towards a career path of performance, but I also have this business degree to fall back on. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the acting class will give me some pointers that I can use for whatever I decide to do because it's still mm -hmm. very open for me. That's very true. But, and I remember him telling us about a friend that he has that all they do is there is all kind of money to be made in the performing business. It, you don't have to be the biggest star. You don't have to be the next Angelina Jolie or Katy Perry or somebody to make money. You really can go in and in these theaters they have these things just called cold script reads. All you do is you go on stage much like this where you're just sitting and you just read straight from the script. And he knows people who you know make quite a lot of money doing that. You don't have to do anything outlandish and it's really those type of reads are to really get a message across. They, people want you to listen to the words more than be distracted by like sets and costumes or you can do you know 
casting, directing. You don't even have to do acting. You can do stagehand, theater management. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff that can be done in the performing arts business. Like I said, you don't have to just be the next big star to make money or to make it in the business at all. Right, like even Carr himself worked with a lot of different movie mm -hmm. stars and um, he was basically helping to produce, or helping to direct. Yeah. yeah, he was a casting director for, what did he say, like 10, 12 years? Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's just, it takes hundreds of people in jobs we've never even heard of before to make what you see on TV possible. Right, so you much know? goes into it. Exactly, and so we're going to get into that in, you know, some of the next few classes that we do. And so I think I just, we should help dismantle the misconception that there is no money to be made, or there is no successful career in the theater. Or that it's too out of reach. Yeah, yeah. Or, that it's, or that nobody can do it. Like, there's only special types of people, or the one in a million type of person, to be able to have a successful career in the performing arts. Because I really think anyone can do it. I mean, you can do videography, photography. You can learn that you might love tech stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. the amount of things that go into a performance uh, via tech-wise, or, you know, computer handling, you know, camera handling it's there's so much to be done but I prefer acting oh yeah <laughs> we do prefer Definitely. the acting part and so you never know and also just like your community theaters you can create your own companies like that you could your business major could be used to create companies theater management right. it really is the possibilities are honestly endless and so I think we should all like be more aware that you can do anything in that right. particular section so that's about all we have today to talk about mm -hmm. the theater class, the acting class. It's a really good class to take, and it's been really rewarding for both of us. Mm -hmm. And um, we encourage anybody who's interested maybe next semester to come and join us. Yes. And there, we'll I think there's going to be an audition class, a movement class, and a voice class next semester. Right, and he's been throwing around ideas about maybe potentially in the near future getting some more dance stuff too. That is true. So he's really trying to, uh, you know, fluff back up our performing arts programs right, quite a lot. all necessary. It's mm -hmm. not just show choir and theater. Exactly. There's so much that goes into it. And, you know, the arts is a real career. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, you can't be a painter or an artist or this, that, and the other. And you really can. I mean, people make boo-coodles of money. You can be a teacher. You can teach it. it like I said, you can take it to business, you can take it to communications. It really is a wide field, so just be open-minded about it. And especially if you want to try it, there's nothing holding you back. Right. Really it just really takes a good support system mm -hmm. is all it takes. And it's very professional in there. So feel mm -hmm. very comfortable giving a piece of yourself in that performance because it's very safe to do that in there. You're not going to be judged harshly or anything. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's about all we got. Yep, so like I said, if you're interested in joining us next semester, um, be sure to sign up. And if you have any more questions, you can always come see Carr and the theater or Miss Evelyn or anybody like that. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.